looking at one of Skoda's most practical and fastest SUVs they make. This is the Skoda Kodiak RS. It's the fastest Kodiak you can buy. And I wanna find out if it's worth buying as one of the best uh, performing seven seater SUVs you can buy for less than $100,000. It's quite an appealing car because other fast seven seaters cost well north of $150,000 like the Audi SQ7, Mercedes GLS 63 and the BMW X7 M range. This thing is really appealing because it's got a fast power plant under the bonnet, it's got some sporty characteristics to it and more importantly it's designed to drive really fast. So I want to see if it's worth buying a fast seven seater like this or simply go for something a bit more predictable like a Kia Sorento or should you really be spending a whole lot more money on the likes of an Audi, BMW or Mercedes to get that real performance. And so to do that, I'll walk you around the exterior features, the interior features and of course take this thing for a drive both off and on road to let you know if it's worth buying. My name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars, let's get into our first Skoda review. Now the Skoda Kodiak RS is priced from $74,990 drive away and that's quite an appealing price because it's a real middle range between some more affordable seaters that don't really have the performance or luxury features this have and obviously all the way up to those really fast guys like the Audi SQ7. Now what are you getting when you get an RS? Well you're getting a more aggressive exterior and that includes blacked out appearances like a blacked out grille you have some more blacked out accents down below and as we move along the car you'll see the rest of those you'll also see these blacked out mirror caps as well. Now I really like the RS badge just neatly put here on display and the grille and actual bonnet design is very aggressive on this car. The light design here is fantastic it's all LED, so LED daytime running lights and LED headlamps. And I also like these separate headlamps down below. The split look is quite cool. So along the side of the Kodiak, first of all, let's talk about the design. Look how square this thing is. I love the wheel arches. They're nice and boxy, and this really does have a nice traditional SUV look, which I like quite a lot. And it's not going for that coupe look to sacrifice any practicality there. Now we have 20-inch wheels. These are called the Sagittarius Aero wheels because they have these plastic aero covers on top. They are removable, but I presume they're there for a bit of increased fuel efficiency and obviously to help increase air smoothing along the side of the car but this isn't an EV so that's not normally entirely necessary and then underneath there we have some red brake calipers with some beefier brakes for this model. Now there's minimal plastic cladding as well I just this is enough to make it look like it can take a bit of a beating as an SUV which I like quite a lot more of that blacked out packaging around the windows which I like but yes gloss black plastic around the outside but over the nearly 8,000 kilometers things driven it doesn't look too scratched up so this looks like it's a nice gloss black material that should withstand the test of time and then you'll save your roof rails up here in black which look quite nice. Now it's worth noting this does have keyless entry and exit um, so that's quite useful but what's cool is that this Skoda is fitted with some little door protectors that pop out when you go to open the car. You see it just swing out like there and it goes to the most outer edge of the car so you can go ahead and bash this against anything that might uh, actually chip your paint. So try not to use that on someone else's car but again that would protect your car and someone else's car but mainly against walls you don't have children or yourself accidentally just throwing this open and then chipping the paint. And then when you close the door, it tucks away like that. Now it's also worth mentioning that in the door here, you do have an umbrella. It's a Skoda branded umbrella, nice and small, actually a nice quality umbrella as well. And then you can just pull that in and out and chuck it in this little door pocket when you need it. And in Sydney, that's been pretty useful so far. And we also have those door protectors here on the rear doors as well. They're nice and large, so they're not gonna really miss out on any sections of paint. So you won't have any chipped doors, hopefully, when you're driving around in this thing. Now the back of the Skoda Kodiak gets a black rear spot Spoiler, you also have your rear wiper here in the middle of the window. You have blacked out badging and also I do like how Skoda is stamped across the back here. You have VRS and everyone knows this is all wheel drive by the 4x4 symbol there. There's a rear reflector strip that runs all the way across the back here which yeah I think is a little bit questionable in terms of design but I know it's there for safety. And then you also have these rear LED lights which are fantastic. They're nice and bright and they have rolling uh, indicators which I like. Those progressive ones they look nice and up to date and very Volkswagen group like. But then what I do like is that when you lock and unlock this car, it has an animation for the rear tail lights, which just looks so cool when you can see it and, you know, just to add a bit of flair and luxury to this car. And then down below, we have some very big exhaust exits and in there are a very real exhaust. But there's a little, uh, just big asterisk to these real exhausts is that there is a fake exhaust sound that's played externally and you can hear it on the inside as well. So yeah, here's what this car sounds like when it starts up and then here's what it sounds like in eco and then it will sit when it's, everything's off and then when we go into sport which will be the loudest setting you'll be able to hear the differences between all those modes. Now 
Now, probably the reason why you're looking at buying a Skoda Kodiak is because of the boot space. So to open this, you have a button on the back, on the inside, or the key, which is very traditional for an automatic boot like this. And I like how quick it operates too. It's also height adjustable, so you don't have to smack the top of your garage. Now in the back here, we have a smaller amount of space because all the seats are up, but there still is quite a nice amount of width you have here and still quite a amount of height. So you can put probably like one and a half golf bags, maybe two if you're good, um, across the side here. Now what's interesting is that the Skoda uh, Kodiak came with a little Skoda blanket here, which is just nice to have, and you can chuck that on the side. And then what's great as well is below Below this uh, floor here, we actually have a few compartments either side which access smaller little pockets, but then that all joins up for one giant underfloor storage compartment here. And that also shows you where your spare tire and everything you need to change one also under there as well. And it's a great place to store your cargo cover if you don't want that. Now to fold down the third row, there's some pull tabs here and you just throw them forward. And I did find they sort of snagged on the seats in front just a tiny bit, even in the most upright position, but nonetheless, they're easy enough to push down and they create a nice flat load space. But there is a tiny little lip here, but it's nice and covered up from a bit of carpet trim. So nothing really should be falling down in between there. But what I would suggest using is the um, included cargo net here because you need to hold this stuff down when you want to use this thing as a Kodiak RS because through corners, everything will fly around in the back here because I definitely expect that on the way up here. Now the door feel of this car feels quite nice, but that door handle feel just feels a little flimsy at times. But once we step in here, it feels like a very premium product. I really like spending a lot of time inside the Kodiak and I've been using this as my daily driver for the past week and it's been very interesting to use. In terms of this being my first experience with the brand, I've just really enjoyed exploring and learning everything about this car. What I've come to the realization though is that yes, this does feel towards the more entry level of Volts, the Volkswagen Group product range. Um, so like stuff like this material up here on the doors, some of the materials around the climate controls and the climate controls themselves and down towards the low, the door yeah, there's some uh, more harsh feeling materials like this fake carbon fiber looks good But feels just a little plastic heated touch and then this quilted pattern on the door Just feels a little shallow and not very padded But then aside from that we have some nice materials like plenty of stitching some rich leather here on the steering wheel and on the seats And I do like the stitching and the actual construction of these bucket seats as well And then in terms of the electronics everything works really nice So the center screen is seamless as well as the display in front of me. So yeah overall quality quality. Yeah, it definitely feels like, you know, if you stepped up into an Audi or something more expensive than this, yeah, it would feel like you would hopefully get nice materials. But here, I feel like for the price you're paying, it's pretty well done. Now, there's also plenty of storage here in the center cubby. Um, actually, plenty of places to hide keys and all that sort of stuff, but it's actually not a cubby. It's just more of like a pit um, or like an open box because this is just an armrest that slides over the top so you can just sort of feel more comfortable or just hide anything from plain sight. And then and also there's this little platform here which you can pull out and then when you do pull that out it's double sided so one side's got cup holders and a place to hold your 12 volt little um plug here if you're flying around the cabin like that uh, in here and you can also put your key and some coins but then when you don't want to use that you can flip it upside down and it creates like a nice little tray table space or you can just take it out all together. What I also like is that there's a little bin in here yeah um, this press car has been fitted out with a bin with a little liner in there so it just requires a little plastic bag and you've got a little bin put into the passenger or driver's side pocket which I like quite a lot which is very similar to what Volvo does. Now starting up this car you have the actual start stop button here where the ignition barrel would be for additional key start which I found quite interesting but then once you get this started it just sort of has a nice little animation to it and everything turns on quite nicely it happens quite rapidly there's no real delay I really like it so let's start with the driver's display here so the driver's display is customizable feels very Audi like and I find it interesting there's no glass covering it you can actually just touch the screen and touch the little side panels here in the binnacle which is quite interesting now, I do like the construction of the steering wheel I love the little toggles here at the nine and three to adjust your volume for your media controls and then your driving display here on the right and I do like the little RS badge down below I also like the little RS badge here in the shifter and on the seat now this center screen does have capacitive buttons but it doesn't have a um, actual feedback to it so they're just flat buttons that sort of you know you can use to control the volume and turn the screen on and off and head to the menu but what's cool is that when you go to the actual home of the infotainment here you can do a uh, little hand gesture so you can Wave your hand in front and we should be able to. Ugh. 
well here we go, you should be able to wave your hand in front and it will slide between menus, which is kind of cool. But I haven't really found anything else apart from doing that that's entirely useful. You can't really adjust the volume or anything like that with that gesture control. You just be able to swipe your hand across, which yeah, it's sort of useful, but not really. Um, the main features in here is that you have navigation, you have wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, you also have all your car controls in here as well. You have a nice amount of adjustability for these Canton speakers through an equalizer, which is quite good. It's a bit more complex than a basic equalizer. And yeah, you can store images in here as well, which is very interesting. Interesting. So um, I actually think this screen is quite good, very responsive and a nice contrast and brightness with it as well, but it's nothing too revolutionary. Now down below that you have more gloss plastic, which is something to mention. There's plenty of gloss plastic through the middle and here in the climate controls. So you have your heated and cooled seats, which you can apparently activate at the same time. So you can have heated and cooled seats, which I found very interesting, but they're toggled through the screen, which can be a little bit annoying. Um, you've also got your tiny, tiny little displays to tell you what temperature you've got. And then, yeah, I didn't really like the feel of these uh, climate controls here. They just feel a little bit cheap and nasty compared to the Mazdas that I've just stepped out of. So yeah, that's just something to note there. You have your major buttons down below. So we do have autonomous parking, which is quite cool at your fingertips. Um, I have tried using that and I did find it a little bit hairy to use because it's quite quick and I just was worried about it knocking a wheel on the curb because it gets very close to that but um, nonetheless it's still very useful to have and really quick to react and then we have a wireless charging pad two usb ports and yes a 12 volt socket now we've also got our drive modes off road modes and our electronic handbrake down in the middle and also what's cool is there's a little usb c port up near the um, actual re rear vision mirror here and i just assume that's for your dash cam so you don't have to wire a wire all the way through to power them down with these two ones here so you have another usb USB-C port up top, which is very useful. So look, it's a very thoughtful interior. It's not gonna have the best materials available, but you're getting a really nice mix of sort of a sporty interior with this red stitching, obviously seats, and also a very practical interior with every feature you might need in a modern day family car. Now, I like how wide the doors are to get in the second row here in the Kodiak. And once you jump in, you're pretty comfortable. There's not a super amount of cushioning in the back, so they feel a little bit stiff, but I do like the finishing back here. We have plenty of quilts and stitching here as well. And I do like the faux carbon fiber effect through the edges of the seat like we get on the front. So you're not missing out by being in the back seats. You also have reheated seats as well for the outer two seats. And you do have your own climate controls in the back. So we have a tri-zone climate control setup, which is very useful. We have some seat pockets in front of us, very basic, easy to use. Nice, generous door bins, which are also felt lines, so they feel nice. Once you close this door here, we have more of that quilted material here on the side and some more faux carbon fiber. Now what's cool is that at night, there is plenty of blue illumination through here, um, and especially along here on the doors. And then we have a little blind here, which has one of the easiest mechanisms to connect up top compared to the hook system that we've seen on some other cars. So I really like that system here and you can get a nice relaxed uh, seating position in the back. Now what's cool is that we can take advantage of this giant glass panoramic roof. And yes, it does split open for the front occupants, but not for the back. And then we do have a blind that can close all that. Now, if you feel sick um, of sitting upright and you wanna really play havoc on the third row, you can relax your seat into a more reclined Client position and underneath the seats here we have little foot rests that's what these are so you can either spin them this way or that way and you can actually just raise your toes up just the tiniest bit and I can tell you what it actually makes all the difference to be honest and I much prefer to have this than none at all and it's really quite nice and just adds to the back seat experience um, especially for taller occupants to really feel like you can stretch out now behind me in my seating position I have plenty of knee room plenty of feet room and plenty of headroom so the Skoda Kodiak RS has really really generous back seats now now there is a pretty sizable exhaust and transmission tunnel. So for the middle seat here, I do have plenty of bum space because they're nice and wide seats. So the middle seat is quite good. And also if the passenger seat wanted to be a bit more generous and push their seat forwards, I'd get a nice amount of knee room as well. But I am playing footsies with the outer two passengers. And then here in the center armrest, I had plenty of complaints that these cup holders were way too small, which they sort of are. There's like a weird small one in the middle. So I'm guessing they know that uh, kids here in Australia or you know kids in the back might get baby chinos or something smaller than is 
sit in that smaller cup holder, but from feedback I've gotten in the back seats, yeah, we need bigger cup holders back here, but we do have a nice plush wide center armrest if you're just carrying four people. So yeah, it's a very nice middle seat, but there's an extra row to explore because that's why you're looking at getting a Skoda Kodiak instead of any other um, SUV. Oh, but it is quickly worth noting here in the back seats that the headrests here have these little fangs that come out. <laughs> Look at that. So really, I found these to be good for your head support. Um, I'm sure these are also good to carry bags or anything like that as little hooks. But yeah, I found this funny that these headrests had fangs just so you can sort of rest your head maybe when you're having a snooze or yeah, you need to carry anything sort of looped in the back. Now to get in the back seats here, Skoda don't really have a sliding solution. Rather, they want you to fold the seats down flat and climb over the top. So as we do that, there's no real handles to get in the back. So it's not very ergonomic. And then, ooh, once we're sat, <laughs> I don't think I've been in a tighter rear seat in a long time. So let's put this seat up a little bit. Okie dokie. Now, <laughs> I just, I, yeah, this is sort of ridiculous. These seats are gonna really struggle to hold an adult back here, but let's give it a real hot go. Now, <sighs> This is me sitting in the back as a five foot 11 adult. I wouldn't consider myself to be massively tall, but yeah, you're gonna have a real hard time making tall passengers in the back or even just adults in the back feel comfortable. These are definitely jump seats for children um, or you know people who can fit back here. I would just say, yeah, leave these for when you only have to use them for people who might find them a bit tight. Obviously, um, someone who wants to sit in the back who's a bit smaller will find these comfortable because there's cup holders in the back and these are nicely padded and they are still quilted with red uh, stitching, which I like how Skoda's kept that theme throughout the car. But yeah, just be mindful you're not gonna have the best time back here. Okay, so the two liter turbocharged four cylinder motor is the real reason why you're looking at buying the Skoda Kodiak RS. So this thing puts out 180 kilowatts, 370 newton meters of torque from a turbocharged two liter petrol motor. It's a four cylinder unit and it can make this car hit 100 kilometers an hour in just 6.6 .6 seconds, according to Skoda. And that's via the all wheel drive system fitted to this car. So let's just run through the basics. So this thing has a digital driving display, which is customizable like we already went over. And this thing is really easy to read. It's nice and reactive and it's excellent just to take a glance and get all the information you need. Now there's no heads up display. So I wish that's something that this car came with because I think that'd be quite useful, but nonetheless, it's still very useful to use the screen in front of me. Now in terms of the steering setup, it's yeah, pretty nice and tight with the car. It's not exactly something that's gonna feel super connected to the road. This is a big SUV still, but this is a pretty nice driving experience for a seven seater. Now this thing cruises really well, even on these bigger wheels. And I find that it's extremely comfortable in eco and comfort mode. So we have a couple of drive modes to go through. So eco mode is actually one of my favorite modes in here, unlike some other cars where here it actually uses the seven speed DSG gearbox. Yes, which this is paired with very exciting because that's very much like the Porsche Macan and other faster uh, VW products that that are made in the VW family. You can find the DSG here in the Skoda Kodiak RS. Um, yeah, it will actually disengage the gearbox and allow you to coast. So if we're going along here, for example, and I let off the accelerator, now we're coasting, which is awesome. And that just saves a bit of petrol, but then it'll also pull back on the gears when it thinks you need to brake or obviously get back on the accelerator. It's nice and quick to react. I really like using um, eco mode in this car. Now I'm going to be real. This thing handles like a large hatchback. It's actually quite enjoyable to drive. It throws its weight around really well. It's really quick to react, um, even in eco mode. So the chassis dynamics of this car are very impressive. So it really shrinks this car down into something that feels far more tangible than a large seven seater SUV might look like. So yeah, if you need to give up the uh, family hot hatch for this, you're not really gonna be missing out on any driving experiences so much because this really does feel like a smaller car than it actually is. Now, what I loved is the uh, driving assist in this car. So it's a one button activation and all you do is you go ahead and you go to the, your desired speed and you can hit that uh, travel assist uh, button here on the steering wheel and it just 
Plus turns on all your lane keep assist and radar cruise control all at once, but then you also have a separate stalk to play around with your radar cruise control distance and adjustments there as well, or just completely turn it off. And I found this to be really reactive in traffic. It's um, actually quite uh, human-like, so it doesn't delay or ask for an input to get started again like the Hyundai and Kia cars, which is really useful. So I found using this uh, travel assist button to be fantastic in bumper to bumper traffic and just boring sections of road where you don't want to be on the throttle just in case you start drifting over the speed limit. And yeah, over long distances, this seat is pretty comfortable. You have adjustable lumbar as well in the lower part of your back, which is nice. So yeah, you can get comfortable in these big beefy bucket seats. But now's the time to talk about how this car actually performs because it's got an RS badge on the back. So we're going to go into normal mode first. There is a comfort setting, but that's not really worth talking about because eco mode uh, does a better job than that in my opinion of just cruising around keeping you comfortable. So you can hear a bit of burble happening. That's actually the artificial exhaust this car has, what we saw on the first generation of Kodiak RS and it's, yes, it is still here. But to be honest, it doesn't really bother me all that much. I actually don't mind it at all. But driving through these sections of road in normal, you can sort of feel that there's something to this car. It sort of suggests with that burble that there's a bit more that's about to happen, and that's true. So when you start the car up, it always starts in normal. So I found that a little bit annoying because I just wish it'd be in the mode that you left it in, but nonetheless, that's what you get. Now, as you can sort of hear, all that luggage in the back swaying around because um, this car likes to corner nice and flat, so that means anything that's loose is gonna fly around, so I would highly recommend using the um, actual luggage net. But let's go into sport mode. So now you can hear that liven up a bit more. So as we sort of head through these corners, <laughs> you use all that power and turbocharged goodness to really start to feel this car come alive. Now you're gonna catch up to traffic pretty quick in this thing and everyone's gonna underestimate how um, amazingly quick this car is for a seven seater because this is gonna be one of the fastest seven seaters for less than a hundred thousand dollars and I really like the driving experience in here from a sporty aspect. Now if you hit the shifter here down into D again it puts you into a normal gearbox drive setting but if you hit it down to S it will give you your sporty driving mode, which is great. And I really appreciate how Skoda's got this sort of real Volkswagen performance to it because yes, as we know, um, Volkswagen's a parent company and you really see a lot of the faster GTI and R products in the Skoda DNA here. But I really like how Skoda's just put this into a large SUV package and it really is quite appealing for those who like a faster SUV but don't want to spend like $150,000 to $180,000 on a fast seven seater because that's what we see with the likes of the Audi SQ7, the Mercedes GLS, S63 and the BMW X7 M range. That thing is uh, quite expensive to jump into if you want to jump into that sort of category. But here we have it in a far more financially accessible package and I really like the dynamics that Skoda have given this car. So we have launching control in this car which means you jump into sport mode, you tap uh, the traction control off, you go foot on the accelerator, foot on the brake and <laughs> you have a rapid car, that is so much fun. Now this does have an off-road mode, so that's what we're gonna quickly test now. So as we jump off-road again, we're gonna jump into our off-road mode that just quickly throws up some off-road uh, little visuals here in the center gauge cluster, and that's all we have to do. So this is just practicing a bit of, um, so this is just practicing a bit of overlanding here because this, these wheels on this car and the extra body kit really suggest that this car isn't meant for hardcore off-roading. This is just meant to be the car like the Mazda CX-5 that when you find a dirt road, you're not worried about jumping off uh, the beaten path because you can really make the most of that all-wheel drive system. Now, as we cruise through here, I can sort of feel those bigger wheels um, be creating a bit of a problem for the ride. It just feels very busy over like lots of potholes. It doesn't feel too, too comfortable and and yeah so this just feels like if you have to go off-road you can I just don't think I'd be buying the Skoda Kodiak 
to uh, do some overlanding. Okay, now look, no one really needs this amount of power in their seven-seater SUV, but everyone sort of wants this as well, because when you get a growing family or anything like that, you need to have a more practical car, you need something that still makes you feel like you want to drive and not something that's not really gonna be an A to B type driving experience. Instead, you want something that's gonna make you feel like how you felt like when you drove a hot hatch. And that's exactly what the Skoda Kodiak RS does really well. I think it's one of those cars that if you have to sort of concede and get a larger car and you're used to driving performance cars, this is exactly the way to go if you need the largest possible SUV option. Now look, there are smaller, more affordable and just equally as fast products from the Volkswagen Group, which have, you know, a nice fast motor, a nice exhaust note, and are still quite nice on the inside and are an SUV shape, but none of them really can carry seven people like the Kodiak can. Now look, that's not to discount the other guys because the other guys do uh, the luxury stuff really well. And I actually think some other cars like the Mazda CX-8 and the Kia Sorento do a better job at the seven seat packaging where this just sort of feels like the seven seats are maybe a slight sort of packaging afterthought because that third row is just way too tight for adults. And there really isn't anything else in this seven seater segment that's doing this this side of $100,000. And that's why I really think this is quite a special car and why a lot of people are drawn to this vehicle because you really don't have to go and spend double or triple the money on something that's really quite fast and quite expensive as well if you want to carry around seven people. So in saying that, I would say consider this car. It's a very good car. I'd say buy it if you need a fast seven seater, but if you don't really need the third row, there are some better options around that have similar performance and are a tiny bit smaller, but also give you, you know, the same sort of thrills this gives you. And to be honest, I really think Skoda is a brand that's often forgotten when people are cross shopping. So remember to write this one down and go check one out for yourself because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised by how well thought out this vehicle is. And so with all that said, my name's Cameron. Thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. Leave a comment if you have anything to say about this or wanna have a chat because I'll be replying them down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.